Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Amen. No baby daddies included. Happy Father's Day. My baby daddy don't include you. But we are honoring fathers. They deserve it. They're worthy and honor. Amen. They're, they're deserving of it. Amen. Means something to be a father. And I want to thank God for my, my father who has passed on into the life eternal. Amen. I thank God for the example that he set. I thank God for the life that he lived. I, I, think, I can tell y'all, I never saw or heard him mistreat my mother. That's his wife. Sometimes we say, that's my mama. That's his wife. <laughs> a wife is more than a mother. Oh, oh, children. Sometimes children think they matter the most. We thank God for you. But a husband and a wife mean more than children because children go off and leave. I just heard my dad tell my mother that, don't, you, don't tie yourself to them. Them boys going to go off and leave you one day. Amen. But I thank God for my father. Thank God my dad has passed on. But I'm appreciative of him. Amen. He set a great example. I am thank God he wasn't a whole chaser. I thank God he wasn't a whole money, he wasn't a money, a money, a money hungry preacher. I saw him help people that didn't go to this church. Amen. He helped folks that at other churches. Big churches. Amen. Sometimes folk too big to help you. We have to be humble in the Lord, ain't that right? I watched my dad make a good example. He never charged, look, he didn't believe in charging when we had dinners. He didn't believe in charging. He showed us in the scripture that we weren't supposed to sell anything in the house of the Lord, including the message. That's what he taught us. Showed us in the word it's wrong to sell anything. There shouldn't be anything for sale in the house of the Lord. Freely you have received, freely Give. That's what he taught us. And I thank God, boy, my dad was a military man. One thing I know, but he could clean up a house. I'm going to tell you something. He could clean up. My mother could clean up, but my dad could clean up. That's why I said, I don't, can't, can't none of us that grew up in the house with dad get the wrong idea about what it takes to clean up in a house. He cleaned up. He cooked. He went to the store. He did it all. I watched him do it all. And I thank God for that example. Because he could take a broom and say, this is what you're supposed to do with that broom. I mean, he'd make a lesson out of it. And then he'd take the mop and say, I'm going to show you how to work a mop. He'd say, you don't use a mop, you work a mop is what he called it. I mean, it's just a minute. He said, and then he, he could make, so we had some places in the, in the yard, it was just no grass, it was just dirt. He said, I'm going to show you what that's supposed to look like. Clean the dirt off to make the dirt look like it's clean. I said, that's the way that's supposed to look. I said. But he believed in being, taking care of things. And he would always say, don't go in there cooking nothing until you wash them dishes. He said, don't cook on top of them dishes. That's what he told us. Don't you cook on top of them dishes. You ain't doing it but making a bigger mess. He said, I don't care how good it tastes. You just made a bigger mess is what he said. And you know what he told us? He said, sometimes we put the most importance on eating. He said, do you know the most important thing is cleaning up what you ate? Cleaning up after yourself. That's what he taught us. He would say, don't lay down with all that mess. <laughs> Boy, he... Boy, he was a, he was, look, dad was, but I thank God for that. Because it taught me I can't be lazy. You know what he told me? I said, Lord, he must have been prophesying to me. Yeah, you need to learn how to clean up. Your wife may need your help. You know what I found out? His dad told him the same thing. 
that your wife may need your help in that house. And I found out his dad told his dad. So what am I saying? I'm saying it was passed down through the fathers. And I'm so glad he taught us how to cook and clean. Said the wife ain't going to do it, be able to do it. Said she may have a job. She's going to come home tired like you. She may need your help. She may not feel like cooking. Said you see these women having to work today. You know what he said? And if you care about her, you will help her too. <clears throat> but you know, I thank God I watched my dad. He wasn't a man that was just, I need you to fix my plate and bring it to me. He wasn't like that. He knew my mother was tired. He knew my mother, he man. You know what he would do? He'd go in there and fix his plate. Now, I ain't telling nobody what to do. Good Lord, everybody getting the wrong idea. I'm telling you what was in our house. You may, have, you may have something different in your house. But my dad would say, Dreddy, you're tired. I can get it. Don't worry about it. You sit down. You know why? He was concerned about her. He didn't want to wear her down from running out behind him. And I thank God because it, it showed how that you can be a man. And you don't have to just be a man that's so dominant. That I need you to get in there and fix my dinner. My mother wasn't abused. But he loved her. I saw what love looked like. Y'all, we didn't have much food coming up, but I saw what love looked like. I would watch dad go to work. And at, at, least, at least two times out of the month, he would come home with some of that good meat and that white paper. With some cheese in it. Cold cup was some of the best food we had growing up. Because it ain't something we could necessarily afford every day. And when he brought milk and cereal home, it was like Christmas. Amen. But I, I thank God I saw love in the house. I saw love in the home. If we don't show our children love in the home, they're going to grow up broken. They'll grow up broken. If they don't see love in the home, they're going to go. The, one, one thing, our, our children are going to go after. The first thing they see that they think is love. If they don't think home is a good place, if they don't think home is a special place, they're going to run to the first thing, alien-looking thing out there in the world, and they'll run to it. And you'll be like, what do you see in this alienated person? And they, they alien because they strange acting. Amen. Where did you find them? Sometimes you say, what rock did you find them under? Because we got some strange acting people. In the world, it's full of strange, strange beings down here. And if our children don't see love, they'll run to these strange beings. Make sure these children can find love in the home. Don't make them just want to, ah, man, I just can't wait. I, you know, if they just want to be all, you know, big head, I just can't wait till I get grown. Go on, get grown then. I want to know how, what you think about buying your own health and care, your own health insurance, your own dental insurance. See how grown you really want to be. We're talking 350 to 400 a check for one person. Oh, you want a family? That'd be 600 a check. Depending on where you work. You really want to be grown? <laughs> Start seeing everything come out your check besides Uncle Sam. And you realize what you got in your hand ain't what you said. But I make this an hour. You do. <laughs> But you're grown now. Remember that. But I make this an hour, but you're grown. And when you get grown, it's time to pay in the grown bank. Amen. I, I, that's why I, I love young people that say they, they know it all and they got it. They think they're ready for this world. I look at them. Go on. Go on out there. See what you're really made of. Go on out there with your big head. 
Amen. I done saw some big ears have to run back home. Amen. Get the big head. I'm on my own. I got my own place. Girl, get your own place. You ought to be tired of rules. Then when they get out there, they cry for help. Grown people. I said, be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. That's why I say, look, as long as the one of the best things young people have right now is a place they can call home that ain't got no bills with their name on it. That's a beautiful place. They don't realize how beautiful it is. Yeah, there's rules there. It should be. Because you're still home. It ain't, your, it ain't your place. But when you start paying for your own place, you come in when you get ready. You can say, man, I pay the rent here. I'll come in when I want to get there. But when you ain't paying the rent there, that's rules. Ain't that right? Every roof that you under has got a rule to it. If you don't have your name on the rent, there's a rule under that roof. That's why I say I love watching young folk just go out there floating like a parachute, only to float back home. They float out there as long as they can, and they got to float right back home where they come from. Because what they didn't realize, this world ain't fair, and this world ain't cheap. You got a lifestyle that's expensive. Stuff costs money. Ooh, my favorite place is Chili's. It right, costs money. Try doing it every day. See, I'm going to tell you who's going to have the money. Chili's going to have the money you want. I got to have me a pair. I go get one. I get one. I get me a wallet. I do. So I'll give me some Jordans. I get a new pair of Jordans every time I get paid. We're going to see how long that lasts. Calling around trying to borrow. Can I borrow? Amen. See, little Johnny come home lately, boy. I'm going to tell you something. You get out there in the world and you'll find out this world ain't fair. This world ain't cheap. And this world ain't easy. Well, I mean, the price of the, to look, uh, a one bedroom apartment. Lord, help me today. I said a one-bedroom apartment, not somewhere with a front and backyard to it. I said a one-bedroom apartment. Then you want to get a house, that's going to cost a whole lot more. But that's why I, I thank God. Home is a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. I wish our young people could capitalize off being at home. Money ought to just be, they ought to have, look, can I say this? Yo, they money ought to be just growing. Every, every time they get their money, ought to just be growing. Money just swelling. You ever seen the audio, the audio indicator when somebody's got an audio, um, it show you the, 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 freak, the frequency. And the frequency ought to be jumping up just, Young people could capitalize it, but when their ears get, I ain't going to say wax in it, but when their ears get a little stopped up and they get everybody else in it, then all of a sudden, I don't watch young people, I'm going to go live with this person. Try it. <laughs> Try that one too. I'm going to tell you how smart it is to be right now. I'm just talking a little bit. <clears throat> if our young people could see that inflation is rising, interest rates just went up, we're, uh, I believe, uh, three quarters of percent, 0.75, amen, percent. The highest since 1994, they increased interest rates. Gas is at an all-time high. Buying a house is at an all-time high. It's like California prices are everywhere now. 
It used to be that you could just find that cost of living on the California side. But now everything is up in inflation now. Go buy a car. It costs money. Trying to find that $1,500, $1,500 cash car, that's hard to do now. Unless you're just planning on putting another $5,000 in the engine or in that car. But it's hard to find uh, these cheap, reasonable, economic things we used to be able to afford. We used to say, I just need a car that I could get from point A to point B. That's hard to do. Cheap now. Everything is up. If young people understand, listen. It's going to take all of us together. Don't walk out that door and let the world knock you upside the head. Because you ain't ready for what's out there. I, it ain't that, that you ain't smart enough. It ain't that I just said you ain't ready. You ain't seen enough. You haven't experienced enough. I say let home be a place you... Your, look here, you can save money. I'm talking about a one bedroom apartment, twelve, fifteen hundred dollars a month. Hey Amen. Go to a newer subdivision, it's more than that. New, par, new apartment complex, that's more than that. Everything is up now. One thing I watch Hispanics do, they get together. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all see all them calls? See all those calls at one house? Don't call, no, don't call immigration on them. Stay out of it. That ain't your business. Only time it's your business when they start breaking the law. But they're, they're over there, peaceful abiding, law abiding citizens. Leave them alone. Sometimes people don't, it shouldn't be that many people in the, If they willing to go through that, to suffer that, let them do. You stay out of it. Hey, you're not in there. But it's sad how people are willing to install themselves in everybody else's business. They're getting along well. But, now, but look at us now. I need my own space. I need my own room. I just ain't got enough space around. Look at, look at us black folk that come out of slavery how we at. Oh, Juneteenth. Hello, Juneteenth, you Look how unreasonable we are now as a people. Cotton picking people we are. Look at us. High minded, exalted, lifted up. Children don't, oh, don't want to listen to nobody. Don't respect our elders no more. Draw, showing off. Amen. Walking the streets, smoking dope. Smelling like weed, smelling like boo. Looking like a fool. And don't want nobody to say nothing to them. Look at our people. I grew up like I grew up because I never had my own room. Look at us. Cotton picking people. Look at us. Cotton high minded. Disobedient. Unthankful. Unholy. The Lord brought us out the cotton picking, picking field and we don't want to go to church no more. Look at our people now. We don't go to church no more. Children, we let our children talk back. We let our children call us by our first name. Well, I don't do that one. What? If I don't hear some dad or whatever, pop whatever, it's some what? I don't answer to that. Because you're not going to call me that. You got to keep a child in a place. Parents got to be the parent. You let me mess up and call my day, y'all. Fuck. Brothers and sisters, believe me, it may have been a knot that I may not have got rid of. We call them may nots. Now that may be one you can't see, but it may not go away. You did not call them by their first name. But I heard little kids calling their parents by name. That ain't, the, that ain't the generation I come from. 
But our young people, they, they, can't, they don't seem to love home like, and there's so many people that don't have homes. That's why we got to stop looking at everybody else's house. So what they house look better? You got a home. See, one thing we don't sometimes know, we don't know what's going on inside that house. Bickering and fussing and cussing and, amen, all kind of stuff going on under that roof, there, and you just want to get under that. I want to be like that. You sure you want to be like that? That's what the Lord will give you. you want, see, some people have money, but they don't have happiness. Some people got money, they don't have love. We need love in the home. We need love. In the home. Do you know the Father have sent you and I love from above? 